Hi, today we're here to talk about the Starting Strength Coach Development Program. My name is Steph Bradford. I'm here with Nick Delgadillo from the Asgard Company. And um, this is a big new thing, so we're pretty excited about it. It's a big deal. We've been talking about it and working on it in some fashion for a year and a half or so, two years or so. So uh, we're excited to finally be able to release it and show it to you guys. And have you get started for real. That's right. Yep. We've had we've had a few people through parts of it, which we'll explain as we go along. Right. Um, but it's a big deal. So number one, we want to tell you why. Why why do we need this coaching development program? And what are the parts of it? What problems does it solve for you? Yep. Uh, well, first reason, our, our uh, bottleneck, so to speak, in terms of um, getting people coaching, obviously, is having starting strength coaches. So it's a challenging evaluation process so it involves coaching experience it involves written exams you guys have seen the videos on that um, an oral board in the future actually in the next couple weeks here so uh, it's not an easy certification to get uh, and as such up until this point it's required that um, it's required a lot of independent learning a lot of uh, getting your own coaching experience uh, and lots and lots of trial and error on the part of the coach uh, in other words, trying things, learning things, applying it, and then the process takes a long time. Right. And it, what makes it different than all sorts of other formal schooling you might, have, might think about um, that you guys have done is there isn't really a competency requirement. But to be a coach, you have to show us that you're competent. Yeah. You have to show us on the platform that you're competent. That you're competent. You have to show us in written form that you um, – understand the theory and you have the experience to apply um, programming and um, really take it to a deeper level than most people are used to. And when people come to seminars, we see this all the time. There'll be a few people who really understand and worked with the material that listen to some of the lectures and can interact with the staff, can interact with RIP, can ask good questions. Um, they come really with ideas. And then there's a whole lot of people that sit there essentially shell-shocked, yeah. overwhelmed by the material because they thought they knew it based on having read part of Starting Strength or maybe have done articles and trying to do the lifts, but they're really not prepared just with the theoretical basis that we start on Friday with. Or they're working as a, as a fitness professional somewhere and they think that they, this is just another certification. This is just another <laughs> weekend thing you do and then you, get, you, you just check all the boxes, you write a check, and there you go. And then they find they are not prepared at all. Right. And then there's people in the middle. They're familiar with starting strength. They tried some of it, but they just really haven't worked with the material well enough to be at the level that's required to pass. Right. And then when we take them on the platform, we see exactly the same thing, just with actual lifts. Yep. They sort of know the, the teaching method from the book, but they really don't understand everything that's behind it, so they can't really do it effectively. Exactly. They are not comfortable working with strangers, and that shows very quickly. Right. Um, and then you can see they have some knowledge of the model and how they need to coach it, but they can't cue the lifters in real time. That's the number one thing people see just in general on evaluations is needs more experience cueing the lifters in real time. Yep. And the only way to get that is to actually be coaching people. Right. So um, you can look at videos of people lifting, but reviewing videos and coming up with the answer after rewinding several times is not... Yep anticipating seeing how he's about to make an error, giving him a cue and correcting it um, as fast as possible, right. ideally before they actually make the error. Yep, yeah. Yeah, the real-time aspect is lost on a lot of people who attempt this thing because they spend a lot of time um, doing form checks or whatever, or they, they coach a couple of people in, in a couple of folks in person, uh, but the majority of their stuff is done through, like, Facebook form checks or on the forum or something like that, and... Uh, uh, they're missing the real time, you know, the evaluating, processing, comparing to the model, and then knowing what to say at that exact time to get them to, get them to move correctly. And what's huge is just not having enough people. Yep. So if you see a couple people, you see their errors, and you work with them, but you're not interacting with a lot of people. Right. And, and really to be comfortable doing this, to have the confidence, and to know what the right thing is to say, you really have to work with a lot of people. Yep. Overall, what we want to do with our coach development program is to make – your ability to learn the necessary skills happen more efficiently. Right. Yes. Streamline so the whole thing. Streamline it. Have yep. a structured approach to learning 
the back mount material, a structured approach to some of the things you need to make sure you um, practice on your coaching. Um, we want to make sure everyone knows you have to be lifting yourself because the successful people as starting strength coaches typically are, are you know, intermediates, but right. definitely have, have gone through the linear progression on their own and started, at least started, to work through advanced novice and some yeah. of the, the struggles that you, you meet there. Yep. Um, so we need experience lifting, we need experience coaching, and we need you working with the, um, the all the theory. Yep. All the, all, the, all the things behind it. Right. So we can help different ways with some of these. Now, one thing that really took us so long with this is how do we get people coaching? Yeah. Right? Because you're not, you, you have to do the coaching. We can't hand you that from a distance. Right. Yeah, it's how to, how to take all of the, and I, when I started this thing, I kind of thought about everything that I did in order to prepare for the thing. Um, for the starting strength coach and uh, and then try to think of how to make it so that it makes more sense logically and progressively rather than just trying everything you know so um, the 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 things that you do as a beginning coach all the mistakes that you make as a beginning coach all the errors all the things that you fail to see the idea here is to is to make it so that that the eye gets refined a little bit faster by looking for things that, that you don't realize you're looking for until later on in, the, in, the, in your coaching experience, right? So, um, <clears throat> so the, the idea will be to, to, to put out coaching assignments along with the, with, the, uh, with the theoretical stuff and to kind of focus the, the coaching in that direction where you, you're already looking for the correct things rather than just like having 35 clients and then making mistakes with a bunch of them and then figuring it out you know, like reverse engineering the correct thing rather than, uh, or instead, knowing from the beginning what to look for. And even if you can't see it, you, you already kind of have it in the back of your mind and then the connections are made a little bit quicker, I think. Right. Well, and, and ideally, really, you, you learn this kind of, you learn to coach best, just lifting best, if you have somebody actually right. there coaching yep. you. So the ideal situation is when you're coaching is you have someone coaching you. Yes. Again, that's going to take us to the, the apprentice program when we discuss right. that. Yep. Um, which integrates with the coaching prep course. Right. What we worried about with coaching prep course is when you put out a coaching prep course and you make that available to everyone, the general public, not just the starting strength gym apprentices, not just people interning and starting strength affiliate gyms, but you make that available to the general public, um, the immediate thing that people think is if I pay you money and I jump through your hoops, I'm going to be a coach. Yeah, right. And that's not how this is going to work at all. Yeah, in fact, in fact, yeah, yeah, and we don't uh, we don't want everybody to sign up, right? Mm -hmm. We want people who are working towards a profession as a starting strength coach, because ultimately that's what we're uh, what we're pushing for here is to make the starting strength coach a career path, not only for people who uh, who were really into starting strength. They got like all of us, right? We got got into starting strength. Mm -hmm. We got strong. Uh, we realized how how much time we wasted with other methods. And then we get really excited about it. We want to be coaches. And then, like, years later, here we are as starting strength coaches working in gyms or owning gyms or whatever. So uh, it's kind of a shift in the way we're going to approach this thing for, for new, new people uh, in that here, look, this is a career path. Here, at the end of this, you can go work at an affiliate. You can go work at a starting strength gym. Um, you can uh, – and here's the process. You know, start here, get through this. It's going to take a ton of work on your, on your part as far as, you know, getting good as a coach, uh, getting strong, doing all the things that we already talked about. So there's still that aspect of buy-in on the, the, the side of the person. In other words, we're not handing anybody the, the certification. They still got to work their asses off for it. But nope. we're making it so that, it's, uh, so that it, it's quicker and more efficient. So, so yeah, we don't, want, we don't want everybody to sign up. We want people who are working towards a profession as a starting strength mm -hmm. coach. You have to have clients. Uh, if you don't have clients, you have to be willing to look for clients or have the means to, to get people to coach. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of this thing, we're not interested in spending um, effort and time in somebody who uh, isn't really 100% serious about the starting strength coach. You know, so the, uh, the people who are working in gyms and as in, in the affiliate gyms or in the, uh, in the starting strength franchise gyms, um, they're going to be they're going to be probably in the best position to do this thing. But if you're working and you have clients on, of your own, 
uh, absolutely we encourage you to sign up. But the point here isn't to just give this a shot. You know, you have to be serious about it and six months, a year from now, your goal should be to be working as a starting strength coach somewhere. We welcome everyone, but if you don't actually have the, the ability to complete the course because you don't have the resources, you're gonna run into problems real quick. I realize a lot of you may not believe this. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what's gonna happen is we're, we'll have people start, they'll sign up for the course, They'll go through, they do the orientation, they'll do the first coaching yeah. section. They may even get to the second one. So a couple weeks in, um, you're going you're gonna to realize whether or not it's a good fit. So we have this set up as a subscription model. So every month you pay the fee and you continue to do the work. But we're not interested in trapping people that are not getting what they need out of the course. Um, so first of all, there's a 10-day trial period. This will allow you to go through the, the first module yeah. and, and see how see how everything works and see what's required and get some feedback on your first writing assignment if you get far enough to do the writing assignment. Um, after that, you get automatically charged each, each month as you're part of the course. But if you decide to bail, we'll prorate you out. We don't lock anyone into it. Um, that's just not how we do things with starting strength. Um, and then also, some of you might start, everything's going well, something comes up that interferes you know, with your ability. You, you just have to do something else for a while. We'll let you go ahead and just pause your, yeah. your progress. Um, we can pause it for up to six months and then resume. And we have an administrative fee for that of you know, $25 or something like that, um, that you'll see if you go to sign up. But we're very serious about having people in it that are getting value from it and when you're not, hey, we, we'll have more time to spend with the people yeah, that, that right. are getting more out of the course, and um, we're not gonna we're not gonna force you to stay in. Right. Or, so even if it's a subscription, it's not it's not a malicious, malignant one. Yeah. That, we don't do that. Just like in the gyms, we don't do contracts um, for our, our training course. We don't lock you in either. Right. The way we have it structured um, is is in a series of modules, which are designed to take approximately a week. So overall. This whole process should take somewhere between four and five months. For each module, you have a core topic that has um, lectures, that has reading assignments that are, that are related to that. So you have a core thing to study. And then we have additional resources that draw on the foundational text, starting strength and practical programming, that um, point you to other exercise physiology, you know, anatomy, yeah. all sorts of resources because we're not just going to hand, we can't just hand you like, you know, a list of things to learn. Okay. It's an area to study. So the approach is we're going to focus on a specific area of study. We're going to give you a bunch of peripheral things that you also should look at. Uh -huh. And then what has to happen is not just this passive, you know, receiving of right, the information. Right, yeah. So you you got to you got to actually learn something. You got to do more than just have it handed to you. Listening and watching is very passive. Reading involves a little bit more, but it's still relatively passive. Um, just reviewing those things over and over is is not very useful. You have to actually think about work with material. That's required for the the starting strength exam. Right. Okay. Yeah. On the orals, you have to be able to answer questions and coherent fashion, yep. just like you would for a client. Yep. And in the written form, you have to put together ideas in a, in a logical, organized way. Yep. And, and having those additional resources makes it so that you are forced to interact with the material. Like if, if, if you and I were sitting here and you were giving me a course, we could discuss the material and kind of arrive at that same place. But by, if you're by yourself and you're going through this course, you know, here's, here's the physics portion of the of the prep course and then here's some additional resources on physics now you've got to go and read that stuff or watch those videos and then find where the connections are and and, and process it in that way so right so to to help you work with it more we have first of all we have written assignments so you're gonna, you're given a list of things you're gonna have to take these materials in the discussion and additional resources ideas you come up with on your own um, some of these questions are answered from your own experience with clients you have to put them together and write them down and send that back to us yep. um, so we can give you feedback of, of how you're doing and how comprehensive you're answering the question, if you're out in left field on some of these things, 
or if it looks pretty good you know you're getting the you're getting things you're putting things together oh i haven't seen someone put it like that before right. so yeah. you're going to get feedback on how you're doing sure. the second component we have is the coaching development camps which have pretty much just been your um, you started those rolling already nick right yeah we've only done uh we've done one so far we've got one lined up for portland february 1st and then the next day in costa mesa at uh, grant Brogy's gym uh on the deadlift and the and the clean so or the power clean so uh yeah so th the idea with the coaching development uh camps is uh primarily for people who uh are either just starting out as a coach or have been coaching for a little while but need to make sure that they're uh, either either see where they're at in terms of the whole thing, like like just an evalu a, a, a no pressure evaluation on your coaching, um, or to actually just learn how to coach the thing. So uh, the idea is that we talk very briefly about coaching, what coaching is, uh, what the different components of coaching are, and then we spend pretty much the rest of the time on the on the platform, like actually coaching each other. So we spend a lot of time talking about the teaching methods because the teaching methods are the interface kind of between the 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 model and the lifter and you delivering that teaching method correctly uh, is critical and a lot of times guys on the platform will just approach the teaching method as a checklist or like mm -hmm. a, you know this I just need to get through it or a mm -hmm. script and just yeah uh, so so my goal with those things because really <laughs> People are going to leave with with good feedback on their coaching, but if I can if I can everybody in the room, no matter what level they're at, mm -hmm. I think that having a really really good grasp of the teaching method and the model through that teaching method uh, is is probably every something that everybody there can take away with them, right? So, um, so we spent a bunch of time talking about the teaching method, all the different uh, aspects of it, all the steps, why each step is the way it is, all the things that are built into those steps, and then how the model is delivered to the lifter through that teaching method and then we do seminar style just to coach each other through a bunch of warm-ups and work sets and then um, I'm, I'm walking around and I'm helping people like giving them real time it, talking to them while they're talking to their lifter and helping them out and showing right. them what they're missing asking if they can see things and stuff like that so. so overall it really is like the same thing we do at seminars and at training camps but with the focus shifted right to the coaching yeah and to coaching the coach exactly because you learn much faster if your coaching is coach just right just if you're a lifter if you're lifting as coach yep. assuming the person knows what they're doing exactly so um this is something that could supplement the coaching prep course for somebody especially if they don't have somebody actually actively mentoring them exactly as yes. a coach right um so maybe you're only getting a little bit of help from a coach um or you don't have anybody coaching your coaching or they're telling you you're not doing good or you are doing good, but you want a verification from somebody who's yeah. not directly invested and maybe biased and not seeing what the situation right. is. That's right. Yeah, a lot. Of, you, you have to beware because a lot of times if you are uh, brought, as in, brought on as an intern, and this applies kind of across the board, right? I mean, if we had an intern here, like when Chase first started, he was just... <laughs> you know, cannon fodder, so right. you know, <laughs> uh, cheap labor. So, so um, you you have to be getting feedback from a starting strength coach if you're if you're interning or apprenticing somewhere. Uh, so if th just the logistics of, of running a, 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 an affiliate gym or if you're working at a at a Gold's gym or a commercial mm -hmm. gym somewhere, this kind of thing um, I think works best for somebody who's got some coaching experience and. Um, and wants a, a reality check, so to, so to speak, on mm -hmm. where they are and, and, uh, and a little bit kind of a, a, a deep exposure to an individual lift. I mean, I, I lifted for probably a year before I went to see, I went to a camp mm -hmm. and then realized that I was doing everything wrong. All right. you know? so, yes, it has. <laughs> yeah. And I think most people are, are kind of experience the same thing. You know, they teach themselves the, the lifts and then they go to camp and they're like, well, yep, doing that wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and then you make improvements very rapidly after that. So I think uh, taking that idea and applying it to coaching, I think will work really, really well. Yeah, and, that, and that's something we see at the seminars, yep. right? So yep. people come in. It, the other thing about the, the coaching development camp is it, it's a, a little bit of a pressure environment. And yep. so one of the big things at the seminars that people don't realize until they yeah. get there is they may be able to, or um, maybe they are doing a much better job at home in a completely comfortable environment, but now they're 
in a place, everything's different, the equipment's different, the lighting's different, the people are different, everyone's strangers, and Rip's staring at you. Right. Yep. And there may be other unsavory characters around as well. Um, and you're you're performing. And it's loud. And it, it's yeah, loud. It's yeah, very stressful. Absolutely. It's 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 a it's a test environment. Right. You know, yep. you're not you're not training. You're you're on the battlefield, and it's a a little bit different. So this actually gives you a taste of, of a, a more performance oriented yep. environment. Excellent point. That's an excellent point. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, even if you're, and we've seen this over and over again, people who are working in a starting strength affiliate gym, and they come to the seminar, and they're just not used to the, uh, they're just not ready for the pressure, so to speak, the, the, uh, the stress aspect of it. And I mean, obviously, you're not going to be in a stressful situation at your gym every day. But it's a good way for the staff to see if you if you actually know the method just by having a little bit of stress there, you know, and seeing that you just don't unravel and fall apart. So it's, I think it's important. So, yeah, that's a good point. You're going to be coaching people you've never met before, um, and you're going to have me or whoever's running the coach development camp um, kind of watching you coach, which is stressful in and of itself. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, good. Yep, it's a little bit different. Yep. different thing. So so again, those are open to everybody. Um, if there's one near you, you know, that's something to consider instead of, instead of a training camp, because yep. if your interest is coaching, you're going to get, you're still going to get coached on your, on your lifts. Right. You're not going to walk away a wreck, but the emphasis is different. And this also might appeal to somebody who's just kind of interested in the theory and the model too. Yep. So, yeah, um, we prefer you not to opt in at the seminar and instead come to a, it, it, for, for you guys who want to, who want to become better coaches. Uh, the coach development camp, that, that's that's what it's for. So it's not, uh, and we talk about this at the beginning of every seminar, the seminar is not where you learn how to coach. The mm -hmm. seminar is a test. The seminars are designed to uh, get the majority of the people in the room who are there to learn the lifts mm -hmm. and learn the method is to right. get them lifting correctly and leaving um, the seminar having actually learned how to do the lift. So we're not there to teach you how to coach. We're there to pass or fail you. That's it. So. The, the gap there was, you know, well, how do, how do we get people evaluated um, with, or, or uh, get them developed during the seminar? There's just no time, so let's just do these camps, and then it's one lift. It's almost all day, and you can spend a bunch of time on it. Right. You cannot make a coach in a weekend. Right. can't do that at the coaching development camps either, but there we're specifically teaching you coaching. Yep. Um, and you get a little – you get some of that at seminars, but – when he, I mean, just to clarify for anyone who doesn't understand, uh, at the seminars, if you want to be evaluated as a coach at that seminar, you opt in to be evaluated. Right. So when he says opt in, that's what he's talking about. Um, when you go to opt in, you ought to, you ought to have a pretty good idea yeah. that, that you have a chance, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, right. So these kind of tune you up beforehand mm -hmm. and get you, um, again, just make it more efficient to get going as a coach. Yep. So really the thing that ties – our coaching development program together that um, has been the thing that has taken it from planning and wondering how do we get this done and how do we get that done you know we, we build up some of the theoretical sides solve those problems but we're left with the actual coaching problem yeah. what has brought that all together and really made it so we're like okay we're ready to get this out now because we we really have the ideal system together now and that is um, going into the starting strength franchise gyms because the franchise gyms have integrated into their model apprenticeships. Right. Apprenticeships um, were brand new people that are interested, that are already training at the gym, right, that are developing as lifters, can come in, start shadowing coaches, start being directly mentored under the starting strength coaches at the gym, watching many many lifters right. go through the same lifts um, and getting direct feedback from their coaching can progress through in a structured way and have a position at the gym too that's right like they actually have this is an actual job so an apprenticeship an is different job, right. than an internship that's right it doesn't it doesn't have to be but typically an apprenticeship is something where you have an actual job you're you're getting paid and as you develop your skills you get more responsibility and you get paid more and the idea is that you keep progressing up because there's going to be people coming behind you. So you can't just, you can't just be let, left at that level forever. Right. And as you progress, you get paid more and you keep moving up. Yep. So it's a, it's a path to an actual 
job. To a job, yeah, a career, yeah. A career. Yeah, and it's uh, it, it's by design too because you know we we're, we're putting out these gyms, we're building these gyms, and uh, the gyms need to be staffed, and um, becoming a starting strength coach is hard, as we already talked about. So, how do we how do we streamline that process? How do we generate more coaches? And it just it just makes perfect sense, right? So you have a starting strength coach at every gym, um, at least one, probably two, and each starting strength coach will be re- responsible for developing at least one intern and maybe uh, a, a second intern. So, or I'm sorry, apprentice. So, uh, a, 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 <laughs> these are apprenticeships. apprenticeships, right? So, Very important. Um, the the key thing to understand though is that you will be working under the starting strength coach. So, in other words, whenever you're in the gym, the starting strength coach is in the gym, and their their job is to develop you as a as a, is to develop you as a coach. Um, not to spread out labor, not to not to offload anything. So, um, as soon as we can get you to the point where you can you can start teaching people lifts, you're going to be doing that. As soon as we get you to the point where you can run a, a platform, run a class, you're going to be doing that, and you're going to be doing that all with a starting strength coach in the room at the same time, watching you, making sure that you're doing things correctly. So this speeds the whole thing up because not only are you are you getting tons and tons of of experience. Um, you know, the, the, we were talking about this the other day. I think that in six months to a year, most people working as apprentices in these gyms will have seen more reps than probably I did in the first three years as starting mm-hmm. strength coach. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I mean, that's no bullshit. You know, it's like they're, they're just going to be working and it's very, very, not high volume, so to speak, but it's, um, but it, it, it's a demanding schedule. So right. they'll be seeing a lot of people and fixing a lot of problems um, with starting strength coach standing right here, checking over, making sure it's right. right. So it's kind of the, the full immersion way to learn. Yes. You know, right. like learning a language, it, it's a little bit better to actually go to the country and, and try to actually function and interact with, with the people there. Right. And just you're developing things on all levels as you hear and you see and you, you know, everything that goes in with the culture and the language together is very different than sitting in the classroom and memorizing lists and, and you know, conjugating yeah. verbs. And coming out, you know, sounding like, you know, an idiot who's learned lists, you know, and is speaking some, some horrible, horrible version of the language. Right, it's right, not right. usable at all. So this puts you in a, a situation where you're learning and, and it's integrated with the practice directly. Um, and again, what's so different, I don't know how many of you guys have done internships. Um, some of us who, um, you, you see this with a lot of, of internships are more, typically seen with associated with you know uh, you know college kind of tracks and apprenticeships more with like vocational technical kind right. of work yeah. going back to the guilds of you know centuries ago um, so the apprenticeships still today which are becoming more popular actually they're they're, they're structured on a you're on the job you're learning on the job you're absorbing everything from the masters above you so it's all about increasing competence in contrast to you know the ivory tower kind of things, what happens with internships is they kind of kick you out to kind of get some experience. Uh, most internships are very strongly just shadowing, and then doing like trivial office tasks. You know, um, very little actual jobs. Now where they can, sometimes they push you on in, into like you know doing their work for them. So I had that experience. Um, in particular, yeah. um, working in this as an internship in a you know VA hospital, and they realized I had research experience and I could handle you know any kind of aseptic technique. Next thing you know, I'm doing all their work for them in the IV room. Yeah, you know, the second week I'm there. Nice. And then after four weeks, I'm teaching the other kids who've never touched a needle how to do it. So these guys can sit around eating donuts. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> and that's the usual spectrum. It's usually doing absolutely nothing except maybe networking maybe you know or you're just doing the work for the lazy guys yep. you know and it's kind of that kind of was not i, I right. think that was kind right. of out of line professionally for them to, to do that um but there you go yep um <clears throat> but very few internships are actually designed to make you learn the job it's yep. not about you learning on the job it's like not a few things and seeing do you really want to be a whatever it is right right you know and in fact, with the the apprentice thing, you know, when you talk about an internship, like you said, it's tied to a to a some form of higher education. And w- look, we're gonna higher. Yeah, yeah. Look, we're gonna encourage education. you 
if you want to be a, a, a professional coach, you don't need a degree. You don't need a master's degree in, in exercise science. In fact, it's probably not even a good idea to do it because you're putting yourself in debt and what are you actually learning in those in those and Rip has talked about this before. Useful things are hard science degrees, you know, math degrees, physics degrees, that kind of thing. Um, but here's here's another alternative, right? If you want to be a coach, you go to a starting strength gym, start training, start getting strong, uh, join the apprenticeship program, start running through the course, start coaching people, and a year, year and a half, you 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 have a profession um, as a very well paid profession as a starting strength coach, um, and no debt, you know. And and again, the, the apprentices do get paid too. Yeah, that's right. That's, and that's integrated paid. in there. Right. Get paid. Yeah. It goes from level zero to three as, as apprentice in the gym, zero, one, two, and three. Yep. And as you go up and you're, you know, you're, you're learning, you're hitting your milestones, you're progressing through the coaching prep course. I don't think I mentioned it, but the apprenticeship, the apprentices at the starting strength gyms are required to be doing the, right, yeah. the, the coaching press prep course. They will be training at the gym. Part of their progressing up as an apprentice is completing their novice linear progression. Right. Um, so they're putting in their time coaching, they're putting their time training, they're putting their time in the classroom side of things all together. Yep. And that's why it um, it will be effective yep. compared to just trying to pick it up piecemeal or to try to forget all the trash you learned at a program that wasn't really based on strength at all. So the typical exercise science right. is all about aerobic physiology. Um, Typically, it's extremely dumbed down as compared to uh, medical or vet school track physiology. You're getting like the lowest level. Sure, yeah. You're not getting physiology. You're getting some kind of dumbed down physiology. You're not getting anatomy. You're getting some crappy little deal, you know. So everything at the university is very watered down for those degrees anyway. Right. Um, yeah. And it's not what you need. If you want to be in strength, you need to learn strength. And then there aren't, there aren't programs designed to do that, really. Right. The, one of the most common questions we get at the seminars, ask Rip um, on on the board, is how do I how do I become a coach? How do I become mm -hmm. a, start, a starting strength coach? How do I become a coach in general? Uh, what can I do? How do I gain experience? How do I get clients? Every seminar someone asks us, how do I get clients? Uh, you know, so uh, this is the answer, right? And I mean, we've and I think we're supposed to talk about this earlier, but we've just we we've, we've talked about this on the site. We've had articles written, you know, how yep. to become a starting strength coach, the path yep. to the starting strength credential. Um, what, um, what do I need to read in addition to starting strength and practical programming? Yep. You know, what physics, what anatomy? And we've given lists, um, general academic preparation, um, specific preparation for the SSC. Right. Um, we've had people talk about what they had to go through on the platform to pass, how to prepare for the platform. We've had other people talk about how to prepare for the written exam and how to write it effectively. And um, this is just right. Yeah. past people to buy largely. I mean, I'm sure some people have gotten something out of it. Um, maybe yeah. some people just got discouraged. But um, it still is just, it's, it's not enough step by step how to do it. Right. So, so just to kind of recap this whole thing, so the, we've got the, the coaching prep course, We've got the coaching development camps, and we've got the apprentice programs at the starting strength gyms, and they uh, they all kind of work together. And just to just to put this in practical terms for you guys watching, if you are an intern at a starting strength affiliate gym, um, you do the prep course, maybe you do the coaching development camps, uh, and then you work your your job as an intern at the affiliate gym, and you gain your experience that way. Uh, if you're if you're wanting to pursue a profession as a starting strength coach and you are near or willing to move to a city where their starting strength gym is opening up, we'll have, uh, we'll have a page on the website called startingstrength.com slash careers, correct? And uh, all this information on the coaching prep stuff will be in there uh, along with the listing of openings for uh, mm -hmm. both apprentices and starting strength coaches. So. Um, pay attention to that because even if you're not a starting strength coach, if you're an apprentice and you're above a level zero um, coach at a starting strength gym, you're getting paid to, to do this. You're getting mm -hmm. paid to do this process and become a coach. Um, if you're an independent coach, uh, you know, you're training people out of your garage or you're training at a commercial gym or you're just getting started, 
your path is you sign up for the course and then you bust your ass to get coach to get clients to, get to coach. Clients. Yeah. Yep. You have to get your yep. clients. That's right. So go to the website, go to the careers page. We'll have all the information there on the coaching development stuff, on the apprenticeships, uh, and the coaching development camps. And uh, we hope to see you at one of those things.